When I was younger, I loved the film Forrest Gump. It made me feel warm and hopeful and human. But as I've gotten older, it's lost its effect on me. I'm not saying it's bad. In fact, it is very entertaining. And when you look at all of its pieces, it appears great. The acting, the setting, the drama, the soundtrack. I think it is kind of a great movie. But I also think it has kind of a not great message. I mean, maybe. I, I can't tell. But, but before I can explain what I think the message is, I need to first explain what it isn't. Many people on the left side of the political spectrum tend to dislike this film because they believe it has a right-wing message. And the right-wingers tend to love it for the same reason. While it deals in many political topics, I don't think this film is outwardly political, in that I don't really think it takes a side. Although it is easy to see why some would see this film as conservative propaganda. Like many pieces of art, Forrest Gump uses its characters to represent certain points of view. Putting it simply, Forrest seems to adhere to conservative values. And because of this, he is rewarded. While Jenny, who follows a more progressive, liberal path, finds only pain and hardship. Think of all of the ways Forrest is the ideal conservative man. He's a college athlete, a war hero, a successful business owner. He respects and listens to his mother. He abstains from casual sex, from drugs, from swearing, all the naughty stuff. He is hardworking, polite, chivalrous. He only loves one woman his entire life. And eventually, he marries her and provides for the child they have together. Forrest exhibits all the traits that conservatives consider positive, while Jenny displays all of the problems of progressivism. Jenny is promiscuous, a drug user, a wannabe musician. She's a liberated woman in that she hitchhikes from state to state, from man to man, never settling down. She's the counterculture through and through. She joins the hippies, the Black Panthers, all of the leftist groups of the era, and lets them turn her into a prop. And then even at the end of her life, when she's settled down, she has a child out of wedlock and ends up dying from AIDS. While Forrest's choices leave him happy and fulfilled, Jenny's bring only punishment. Through the character of Forrest, this film seems to say that making decisions based on conservative values leads to happiness. But here's the thing. Forrest isn't really making decisions. A lack of agency is basically the defining characteristic of Forrest. He doesn't make his own decisions or opinions, especially about something that he couldn't begin to understand. Well, there's only one thing I could say about the war in Vietnam. You're <laughs> The film doesn't take a stance on this left-right debate because Forrest doesn't take a stance. Forrest doesn't adhere to some conservative ideology. He has no ideology because he doesn't understand what an ideology is. Yes, Jenny is seduced by left-wing populism and Forrest isn't, but this has nothing to do with his political values. Forrest isn't an opponent of leftist populism, he's an opponent to populism in general. Forrest doesn't define himself or others by the group they are in. He sees more value in the individual. This brings me to another possible message of this film. Another philosophical debate. Individualism versus collectivism. Again, let's look at what the characters of Forrest and his friends could represent here. Let's start with Lieutenant Dan. He begins the movie in clear favor of collectivism. He wants to die for his country. I can't think of a better example of choosing the group, the collective, over the self, the individual. But Forrest, valuing the individual, saves his life. Lieutenant Dan is upset with Forrest at first, believing it was his purpose, his destiny, to die for America. But eventually, Forrest shows him that his life was meant for more than just dying. Forrest teaches Lieutenant Dan to find joy as an individual, and Forrest does this by leading by example. Forrest is the definition of individualism. Forrest doesn't 
thrust himself into ideological groups, he forges his own path. Forrest defied the braces that confined him and took off into a sprint, and he continues to run, chasing down success. He creates a business empire, gets rich in the stock market, yet still is the sort of man to mow his own grass. He even becomes a professional athlete in a one-on-one -on -one sport. There's no teamwork in table tennis. It is Forrest versus China, which of course is the country known for being the definition of a collectivist. When Forrest gets his heart broken, he doesn't go crying to other people. He makes his own therapy by doing what he does best. He starts running, all by himself. Politics, society, groups, they mean nothing to a man who's this off the grid. This alone. A man who's running for the sake of running. But what's hilarious about this section of the film is that Forrest's rugged individualism starts attracting others to follow. Soon, he essentially has his own cult following him around. A group he never asks for and never really even notices. This shows how desperate most people are to find a group. Of course, the character of Jenny is no exception here. As we know, Jenny is constantly seduced by groupthink. Jenny is drawn to these collectives because she wants to forget herself. She wants to no longer be herself. She spends much of her life running from her past, hoping that the next group she finds will wash away her damaged identity. It isn't that the intentions or the politics of these groups she joins are inherently bad, it's just within their nature to attract people like Jenny, and then chew them up and spit them out. Jenny thinks that by joining these groups she'll be helping others, but at the end of the day, she only ends up hurting herself. Jenny runs away from her past and attaches herself to group after group, but Forrest chases after her. Forrest saves her, because Forrest is what tethers her back to her individuality. And then, of course, Forrest is the one who gives her a child, gives her a real reason to live. She realizes that trying to save the world in some pathetic collective isn't the key to happiness, at least not for her. Her family, that she created and cared for as an individual, is the thing that finally brings purpose to her life. So, with all this said, am I saying that I think this is the message of the film? That individualism is the key to happiness? Well, not really. For the same reason I think the movie isn't pro-conservative, either. For a character's decisions to truly represent a side in a debate, their actions, attitudes, and beliefs would have to be their own. To say that Forrest chooses sides in the left versus right or individualism versus collectivism debates implies he understands which ones he's choosing, or at the very least understands he's making a choice. Yes, Forrest sees individuals rather than groups, and in many ways this is beautiful. But this isn't because he's resistant to the collective's charm, it's that he doesn't perceive the collective at all. Yeah, it makes us feel all warm and fuzzy that Forrest doesn't see a Republican or a Democrat, he just sees a person, an individual. But this isn't because he's transcended the tribal barbarity of political polarization. It's because he doesn't know that political parties exist. Are you running for women's rights? Or for the environment? Or for animals? Why are you doing this? I just felt like running. I just felt like running. The way Forrest lives his life is not meant to be for or against any agenda or outlook. It's... Okay, let me try to explain this with an allegory-type hypothetical story thing. If some evil vandal removed the 10 miles per hour speed sign a quarter mile before a hairpin turn and replaced it with a 75 mile per hour sign, a lot of drivers would fly off that road. However, let's say one driver avoids doing this because they don't know what numbers are and therefore never perceived the misinformation. They have no idea what any of the symbols on any of the signs mean and no idea what sort of twists and turns the roads will ever take ahead. Due to their cautious and ignorant and normally terrible style of driving, they were the only driver to not fly off the road at the hairpin turn. They didn't evade the danger by making the right decision, but rather, their ignorance was so great, they were never in harm's way to begin with. There wasn't an obstacle that they had to work to avoid, there was no work or action or decision or dodging required. The driver's obliviousness made his avoiding of the trap a certainty, 
In a sense, it was preordained that this driver was never going to be a victim of this trap. This brings me to what I think is the main thing that Forrest Gump is trying to explore, the main message it's trying to get across. Forrest Gump is about chance and destiny. It's not about the value of being a conservative, much like how my hairpin turn story isn't about the value of ignoring street signs. You listen to me. We all have a destiny. Nothing just happens. It's all part of a plan. I happen to believe you make your own destiny. You have to do the best with what God gave you. I had a destiny. I was supposed to die in the field with honor. That was my destiny. I don't know if Mama was right or if, it, if it's Lieutenant Dan. I don't know if we each have a destiny or if we're all just floating around accidental like on a breeze. This film is about the debate between divine intervention and chance. This is what the feather at the beginning and the end of the movie is all about. By random chance, it lands next to Forrest in the beginning. Or was it God or fate controlling the wind to place it next to Forrest on purpose? Forrest himself, like the movie itself, doesn't know if this is divine intervention or chance. What's my destiny, Mom? Congratulations, son. Have you given any thought to your future? Thought? Forrest goes with the flow. No, but seriously, he, he like really goes with the flow. Like Forrest has no agency. Just about everything Forrest does is because of someone else. His decisions are made for him. He only runs away from the truck once Jenny yells for him to. He luckily stumbles onto a football team, and again, he must be told to start running. He joins the army because someone tells him to. He ends up playing ping pong because the ping pong ball just <laughs> springs out and finds him. Gump, how can you watch that stupid Rubber shit? Turn it off. You are tuned to the American Forces Vietnam Network. This is Channel 6, Saigon. He never decides to do an action. He never seeks an opportunity. Like the feather in the beginning, opportunity seeks him. These little moments of the ping pong ball or the feather reaching out and touching Forrest, yeah, just apply that to his entire life. Because Forrest never goes looking for any of this. He, he doesn't even try to find the paths. He doesn't have to because the paths always find him. Plenty of the characters Forrest meets have the opposite philosophy of this. They think it's their destiny to be something. They think they have an idea of what's going to happen. Jenny is convinced that she's going to be famous. Lieutenant Dan is convinced that he's going to be a war hero. Bubba is convinced that he's going to own his own shrimping boat. But all of these characters are wrong. None of them achieve what they thought was set in stone. But Forrest, having no plans at all, achieves each of his friend's dreams. He becomes famous like Jenny wants to. He ends up owning a shrimping boat like Bubba wanted to. He becomes a war hero like Lieutenant Dan wanted. Even Forrest's greatest achievements are decided by his friends. Forrest goes to church because someone tells him to. Forrest gets rich because someone tells him to invest in Apple. It really seems like Forrest has no agency in his own life. Jenny 100% makes the decision when they make love. She just kind of jumps on top of him. He's just, oh, what's going on? And then years after that, she decides when Forrest is finally allowed to know that he has a son with her. Now, I'm not saying that Forrest's uh, lack of agency doesn't matter in the world at all. I mean, it's quite the opposite. Remember, Forrest is responsible for some very important events, like world events. Now, the universe is certainly in command of him. But every once in a while, he gives a little input back. You know, he inspires Elvis's dancing moves, he reports the Watergate burglary, and so on. But, I mean, it's not like he's aware of these ripples he's making. He isn't aware of much. But he is aware that he's unaware. Which, in a way, is sort of his superpower. He knows he can't possibly predict the path ahead. So he doesn't even try. He knows that he has no control over the future. And therefore, he has no expectations about it. This leaves him constantly open for new opportunity. Like, look, let's go back to the feather. Really, this, this feather says it all. Because you see, while other people don't notice the feather, or they brush it off like it's nothing, Forrest recognizes it for what it is. 
an opportunity, an unlikely little event that he gets to appreciate. I don't know if we each have a destiny or if we're all just floating around accidental like on a breeze. But I, I think maybe it's both. Maybe both is happening at the same time. So, I suppose the message of the film is to get rid of your expectations and go with the flow. Be open to opportunities, if you're lucky enough for them to find you. Now, I can't tell if the message of this movie is a good one. Sure, it, it worked for Forrest. He is incredibly successful. And sure, much of this is due to him accepting the random unpredictability of life and always being ready to strike in an opportunity. But come on. It has even more to do with luck. I get that Forrest just sitting back and going with the flow is a good way to never miss an opportunity, but Forrest takes it so far he basically doesn't make a single decision in his life. Every one of them is made by other people, and every golden opportunity just kind of luckily drops into his lap. I appreciate his mindfulness, his love of sunsets and water. He takes time to witness the beauty of life and never lets a good thing go unnoticed. But none of this really seems like good advice for the adversity-defying self-made man. It doesn't seem like this would really be the philosophy of someone like Forrest. It, it seems like it would be the way an Eastern monk would approach life. Which is probably totally a fine philosophy to live your life by. But not if you have an IQ of 80 and want to become a millionaire. If so, you've got two options. Win the lottery, or become a mumble rapper. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I apologize about the star background stuff. I know it's very annoying. Hopefully it's not too distracting. I had to do it. I don't know, YouTube was being finicky about uploading stuff with Forrest Gump in it. Hopefully this works and hopefully you're seeing this. If you actually could watch this video and you enjoyed it, then leave a like and subscribe and do all the other things. Okay, thanks, bye.